This is part three of my Linux workstation and server build guide. This part is going to cover the actual uh, assembly of all the components and putting together the computer. If you haven't seen parts one and part two yet, that is the introduction and part selection, give those parts a watch first. The links for them are in the description down below. If you prefer to watch this video as a continuous long form video that has also been uploaded and is available in the description. And now onto the final part, enjoy. All right, let's start with let's start with the first step. The first step is going to be to install the CPU. If you haven't installed an LGA 2011 CPU, it's a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that there's two retention arms and you'll just open them in the same order. It's also a bit different than AMD's like a uh, thread repair mounting. This is very old school if we're going to pop the CPU in. So you'll notice that there is a unlock arrow, unlock symbol and an arrow pointing to this arm and a lock symbol pointing to this arm. So that means to unlock, we're going to put this one first. And then to lock, we're going to have to do it the other way. So to unlock, I'm going to bring this one out. This comes out. Now we grab the second retention arm. Place that one. Up. This will work. Come out. And here we go. So that opens this socket. Now for the socket, you want to match the golden triangle on the CPU, which I will show, to this upper left corner and in the socket it's going to be to the bottom right corner so grab a cpu notice how here's my cpu here in this corner, there's a golden triangle. You're going to want to match that golden triangle with this corner. Pop it in and it should go in. It will only go in one way. Do not force this. It should not really move around. Now we can close this arm. And when you're closing, we're going to do it in this order with the lock symbol pointing there. So we're going to put this one first. followed by that one. You can expect to have to put a lot of tension on this. Now in this case, you'll notice that we don't start here. The unlock arrow is pointing there. So we're going to start with this lever, raise this one, then raise this one. All right, so now this will whoop, lift the arm. Once again, I'm going to pick up my CPU. You'll notice that there are notches on it. So there's a notch here and here. And you'll notice that the golden triangle is here. So in this case, you're going to want to line the golden triangle up with the bottom right corner. It should click into place. There are once again uh, the things so you only put it in one way and what to lock we're going to do it the other way. Put on a lot of pressure. All right. It feels like you're going to break the motherboard and that's probably because you're probably really close to but trust me you have to do it that way. Next let's do the RAM because the RAM is really hard to do after the heatsink is installed. Um, but before that, let's do the heatsink's four posts and then we will do the... Let's do the four posts of the heatsink first, then we will do the RAM after we after that, and then mount the heatsinks just because it's really hard to reach the RAM after the heatsinks are on. So the heatsink comes with these screws. These are little standoff-like things. Um, they're going to mount to the motherboard around the CPU socket. So you'll see that there are four, four positions for these. Here, one. Two.
three. Notice that I'm, I'm not tightening them down yet. I'm going to tighten them down with a screwdriver later. Four. Five. Six. Next to screw these in, you're going to need this adapter. This is a little hex on this side. Hex on this side, Phillips on the other. So let's use a Phillips screwdriver to screw these in. So put it in. I'm a fan of doing these in a uh, crisscross diagonal shape, just so that way it takes. I mean, I don't know. Usually, that only matters for the actual heatsink. This is a terrible screwdriver to do this with. I wonder where my other screwdriver is. Given that I don't know where the good one is, we're just going to use this. All right, good enough. Next four. There we go. Next up, let's get the RAM. So make sure you put the RAM into the correct slots. Now I know what these are, but if you don't, look at the manual. And over here, you will notice that there are multiple cases. One CPU, two DIMMs, one CPU, four DIMM, two CPU, two DIMM, two CPU, four DIMM, two CPU, six DIMM, 2 CP8 them. We have 2 CP4 them. So it says you need to use DIM A1, B1, E1, and F1. Once again, A, B, E, F. If you look at the picture here, this is A, B, E, and F. So those are going to be the four lanes, four slots closest to the CPU. So from the top down view, that is these two ones right here, these two, and these two, A, B, E, F. The reasoning for this is that it's probably presumably for quad channel, um, although in this case, I don't know if it would matter too much, but in normal circumstances, you'll want to put it into the order that the motherboard recommends you put it in, so that way you will get dual channel or quad channel or how many channels your system is supposed to have. Fortunately, I thought this video I could record in HD, but it looks like that camera's going to keep reporting errors every 10 seconds about the SD card speed and stop, so we're have to, having to decrease. All right, so then insert the RAM. You're just going to click it. So push on this side. Push on this side. You heard that two clicks. Next one. They only go in one way. 
Notice how there's a notch. So it can only plug in one way onto the motherboard. One, two. All right, let's grab the next. Once again, don't be afraid to push here. There have been many RMA issues because people's RAMs haven't been fully seated into their into their motherboards. It's quite a common problem. All right. Next up, let's put some thermal paste so we can install the heat sinks. So I'm going to grab the thermal paste that came with one of our coolers. Hopefully, this hasn't completely dried out by now. Hope that there's some left. Not very even because we're at the end of this puny tube of thermal compound. And I prefer I know that this left one needs it more, right one doesn't have as hard of a job. I do have two more rolls of these that I should have brought up, but that'll be for the next time I uninstall and reinstall the heat sinks. So this is going to go on. is first you are going to grab the heat sink and this is best done with this you need to get this into here like that extend this to the middle position all right now you want to make sure that these are all on the outside position so notice that these screws can move inside here so you want to make them on the outside then you can center put this down Now I'd also, as I said, put a little bit more thermal paste than I used just to cover the whole surface. Like it's fine if it oozes out the side of it and these are much larger than your LG 1150 where you would go piece size. Generally, you shouldn't tighten all the way down at first. You should do like halfway, then go back and do a second run. That's just because historically there have been issues where you could where you could um, potentially crack like the heat spreader on the CPU if you were to do it. If you were to torque one side a lot more than the other. In this case, these are springed screws, so it's really less of a concern. Not to mention that there's a massive IHS on it. All right, go around. I think you can see why the fans are such a hassle for me is because they always like to interfere 
But instead, I think I am going to try to revert this fan mount, which I had backwards, over to be the right way, because I think we can get away with it if I am careful about the way I do my installation here. And my reason for wanting to flip these is actually quite simple. It's easier to clean. As you can see, because this fan was on the exhaust, dust made its way through the heat sink and would get gunged up. Oh no, I have thermal paste over myself. Oh well. I don't know what all the blue specs are, it's just this garbage screwdriver. Yeah, this is very dusty, and this is after I did a nice run of the vacuum on it. For my sanity to not have to deal with this much dust again. Flip it. Now these are 4-pin fans, which means that our motherboard will be able to control the speed, which is at least one positive. This is when you regret using the screwdriver without the magnetic tip. Since the fan is square, I don't care about the logo. I want them out to such that the wire will come out this side, so it can go to that header easily. So that's fan 6, this should be fan 2, that's fan 1, there's fan 5 up there, not that it matters particularly, we can run it to here or here, or up here. I expected myself to be using a lot more of the uh, fan headers on this motherboard, but I appear to have forgotten the slight problem which was that you don't get speed control. Gonna go like that. So I'll make this quick. Go into here. Alright, now we clip this onto the heat sink. Now we're gonna have to repeat this whole thing. I like getting the fan slightly lower just to get some minimal amount of airflow over the motherboard if possible as well. So let's do it this way. Perfect, and then this can run right up to here. I really, I don't like the f cable going out that close to the motherboard now that I think about it. Quite close to the heat, but oh well. I'm not dealing to uh, fix that. Alright, second heat sink time. This is why we're going to have to be really careful when putting those screws on and it's going to make me swear. So, because I, I hate doing it this way because you can't get at the screw holes. But in general, you want to repeat what is a very similar process. So you make the X. Then, struggle to get it underneath the fan. Right, now I remembered why I put the fan on later. Get rid of this for now. You're going to need to precisely put these screws there and here over the corner. Start with this corner over here because it's the hardest usually. There we go. Oh, come on, not
All right, now it's time we struggle to get this fan on. So this is going to be a bit of a... Uh, soon. Fan one header because it has a number one. Oh, oops. All right, there we go. Heat sinks mounted ish. This fan's not level, but that's gonna have to do, given how constrained I was with this. Alright. Now we can plug this one in here. Alright, the next step is sort of difficulty now starts getting it into the case. Uh, before that, I think we should put the power supply in the case so that we can start routing it up to the motherboard. So let's me move this motherboard off. The heat sinks are a good spot to hold it now, given how securely they're probably mounted. Now let's move the case out. Alright. So mounting the power supply is relatively easy. If you are going to be putting this on carpet, you'll want to go fan side up. For me, uh, it's going to be just on this floor, so I'm going to go fan side down. Okay, this won't get caught on anything. Alright, kind of just comes up there, just like that. Now we just have four screws to screw in. Alright. Unfortunately, the other angle is not going to be very useful for this one, but so you'll notice that since the power supply can go in either orientation, there are these two holes are slanted. So you just have to line this up, push it in, and then use this hole. In the bottom, it'll be that it's going to be this corner one. This corner is uh, the offset one, just like this, and this corner is a regular one. So the top two are offset. Now that's more important on chassis where the power supply goes on the goes on the top, right? To make sure that you're not accidentally mounting it backwards or anything. 
Um, because otherwise if you pointed it up and there was no ventilation for it, you would choke the power supply. So in that case, it has to be mounting down or fan facing down. In this case, it doesn't really matter particularly because, well, the reason this case has the offset here and here as well is because, well, if I were to turn this upside down, I can just screw it in there because, well, it's just going to grab air from inside the case, which is valid, you know, if you're going to put it on carpet or something, you don't want to suffocate the poor thing. And the last one. All right. Before we proceed with anything else in the case, get your motherboard's I.O. shield. It's this thing. Um, it's going to be serial up. Network ports down like this. Line it up. And we're just going to pop it into place. So that's the IO shield. Now we can get to mounting the motherboard in the computer case and then we'll deal with all the cables. As a tip, I will suggest just yeeting these cables all off to the back. For the time being. I find it best to lay this flat to just like this. Then we can proceed with the motherboard. Make sure. Now, this is important because you don't want any standoffs where there shouldn't be any standoffs. Similarly, you don't want this to go the... You don't want the opposite problem either, right? Um, okay, so hopefully my top angle is working. My apologies. So I just inserted the motherboard. And what I'm checking for is if I remove this, you will see that there are, I'm looking at the standoff locations one, two, three on the bottom, one there. And I'm going to make sure that I can see every standoff. Similarly, I want to look for where I don't see standoffs. Where I don't see the standoff through the hole, but where I should. And if the case lets me put a standoff there, I'm going to put one. I know that this case doesn't in many cases. So I can see my top two lined up, my mid are lined up, and my bottom one, two, three. So in this case, this hole doesn't have a corresponding standoff in this chassis. The top left hole also doesn't interestingly have a corresponding. So this top left one over here we cannot screw in those two are fine this one we cannot screw in so we're gonna be missing two standoffs which honestly should be fine I don't think that's the biggest concern here I would be more concerned about the opposite scenario as I said where there's a standoff but not a hole on the motherboard because that's what causes damage so we're gonna have to do the get in here with one finger approach which is not happening
All right, well, let's do the other ones first then. Alright, that's the next one. Perfect. Alright. I should now get my top down camera back so we can now continue with this screw. Mm. Alright. Two more. Plus, technically, the one on the top that I am skipping. Oops. All right, now let's grab. Second last one. I say second last except for the top one, which I'll have to do with a magnetic bit. So I won't be able to do that one by hand. Get it so with your fingertips, and then we can use the screwdriver to finish it off. You can use an automatic screwdriver as well. I just like the manual one. Make sure you don't over torque it because you don't want to over torque your motherboard. Or else you're just going to have more trouble. So. I'll use this to get the last one to try. And that, folks, is how you turn a screwdriver into a magnetic screwdriver. To be honest, I have no idea why I didn't just make that hack earlier. <laughs> this is so effective. If you guys aren't aware, if you have a neodymium magnet, particularly a nice strong one laying around, what you can do is you just take it and rub it against your screwdriver, and now you've got a magnetic screwdriver. It's actually quite powerful now. Very nice. I leave that magnet under my desk for pretty much that reason. 
um, to magnetize non-magnetic screwdrivers usually. So now we need to get the power cable in because that's like the next hardest part. So I'm going to put this back upright. So we'll have our multiple angles from the front and the back. And I can pause the top angle. We'll need that back again when I'm adding add-in cards. So until then, here's what we're looking at. Let me bring out the work light. Just to help it. So, motherboard, 24 pin, 24 pin. These are the ones that gotta come from here. All right, now we lay this flat again. Start with the 24 pin because that is the challenging one. All right, so this has the clip I can see at the bottom, so we want it facing this way. All right, I heard the click. That is excellent. Next, I'm going to uh, get the CPU. So it's 24 pin. It's in a okay. Next, we got the two eight pins. This motherboard wants both of them because we have two CPUs. So I'm going to take this one. Join them up if I can. Uh, this power supply doesn't have a particularly elegant joining mechanism, and I'm just going to plug it in. All right, one eight pin is in, now the second eight pin. And I don't know why they made both of these non-modular, but it works for me, because I need both anyway. All right. Both eight pins are now in. Perfect. Perfect. We're on the right track. Heat sinks in. Ram in. Eight pins are in. All right. Now it's time for. Well, I mean, in the order I do it. Uh, let's do the front panel stuff because that's hard to reach too. So, what we're going to do is grab Of these, these are the annoying ones that you kind of manually have to do. So let's tip this over again. 
and let's plug these in. Now, your guy here is once again going to help you through this. Just look at this section. See this block diagram? That's going to tell us what to go where. Power button, reset button. Those are the two I care about. I don't want to cut the activity LEDs because I just have to tape over them anyway because otherwise I can't sleep. So we want to get power button, reset button. If you look over here, you'll notice that these are labeled. Power switch goes on the very bottom. Yep. Next we find the one labeled reset switch. That's going to go to the one above that. If you want to cut the LEDs, you're more than welcome to. There's the power LED and hard drive activity LED ones right there as well. I uh, don't really care about those. so. And just you know shove the excess to the back of the case maybe I'll solder on some colorful LEDs instead at one point you know ones that are red so they don't wake me up instead of the beacons that they like to use all right so next up we can start with the hard drives and SSD so this hard drive I typically put at the very top. Now this case normally has latches for the drives. The problem is, if you compare a standard desktop drive and one of these helium drives, you will quickly notice what the problem is. So take a look at this. Top is helium, bottom is normal. There's a missing screw hole and the dimensions are not exactly the same. So when there was a quick release, this mechanism goes in, goes out, no problem at all. However, be but because of the chunky helium drive, well, doesn't really want to go in there. So I've stretched this out just enough to be able to fit this. And uh, because I've always used it in the top, top and second are the more stretched ones, yeah. All right, and this WD blue, we can put it into this one. Slides are much easier now. You can see the thing slightly bowing because of that helium drive, but that's fine. We will also install our optical drive. This is a Machida Blu-ray reader. It doesn't even have a front. It came from my old laptop. I used to use a TSST Corp writer. I hate TSSD Corp, all their, I've gone through three of their stupid DVD writers and they're all broken now, so. Matsushita or Panasonic hasn't uh, let me down yet, so, you know, just leave it there, I reckon. The front panel's taken off for more airflow, so you know, just, I like to lodge it this way so that the DVD's turning, don't spin it too much. Right, that's our DC jack that I just put on the end of that. Now let's run power cables. We're going to need two of these. One for our hard drives. So this can go into any of the 
SATA slash Molex connections, and then just feed the rest of the cable back. All right, from behind here, we can now also let out our eight pin for our GPU. So this can now go to our hard drives, but as I said, it doesn't go this way. It goes top down because Antec for some reason decided that's better than this. So we need to connect first the 10 terabyte, then the WD, then uh, I don't know, just leave the rest here. If I add another drive in the future, we'll use that. Grab a second lead. I think these are roughly the same length. We're going to feed this one here. This one's going to stop by uh, optical and then make its way down to the SSD cage. So turn it on. Plop this one in. There's nothing by the optical drive right now, but this will go over to that. And I'm going to have to make a mold like a centipede here. So there's a couple of Moldex accessories that I want to use. So first we got this thingamajig. This is a uh, home cooked uh, five volt splitter. So I soldered a uh, DC jack onto here so that can power the optical drive. And this can go to fans in the future. I don't know. I used to cup LED strips to it. It's actually for a fan, but I just cut the connector off an LED strip and I soldered on three pins so that it I could use a fan thingy so that I could um, power LED strips in the case. But as I said, this is now in my bedroom. So I really am not as excited about having LEDs in the computer anymore. Then at the end of this, we shall plug in this. Make sure you get the Molex connections the right way around, because they're kind of jank. So this is going to go to our fan hub, number one. And this whole thing goes to the back of that. Now this Molex can go back here. This is for when I ev eventually add a proper optical drive into the computer. This is for the SSD. And this Molex will come around. There. All right, pick it up from here, connect it to this chain. Alright, so that connects power to optical drive with this fan cable. Now this fan cable will, I like to just run it along the side there, underneath the hard drives. This usually I just leave like dangling here. Then this cable goes up from the back because this fan cable, I will um, route to these two. Which is the top and rear. I just chose that because it's easy. This fan in the front 
will get attached to here along with the uh, hard drive cooling fan that I typically have. Next up we have our SSD. I'm going to choose to put it on the left side here. Since that's where we have power readily available. All right, and now I'll do SATA in a minute. Let's do SATA. Cable one, cable two. This is a cable that I usually just coil up. This is an eSATA cable for my external hard drive mount, dock thingy, whatever you want to call it. Typically, I just use one of the ports on the HBA because I know it's hot swap. In this case, I'll just leave it in a bundle. We don't need it at the moment. This red cable can go to either... Well, is this the true S? Okay, so this one says SATA 3 on it, so I know it's SATA 3. I'm not trusting the first port because that's the one the old SSD was plugged into, and I don't want to fry another SSD in case it's a hardware issue. Actually, what I not take any risk with that at all and I'll just plug it into the HBA that way we further reduce the risk of for cooking something we can run the optical drive we can run hard drive number one and hard drive number two perfect so both of these will on this end will connect to Drive 1 and Drive 2. These are the original ones that came with my motherboard. There we go. Route them through the bottom. I guess I might as well roll this red. part time plus this so it's going to be really hard to get at these at the bottom now so now is a perfect time to take my two USB 2 beloved adapters and plug these in they will have a pin knocked out so this one goes like this pin knocked out. That one goes like this. Perfect. Now it's expansion card time. Starting with the big bad boy, the GPU. So we're going to use the top two. Of course, not this way because that would go into the middle of the RAM. So next two. Oh, I want to get the top camera for this. Uh, let's see. I think that would be a good angle to have. Alright, so for the GPU, here's our GPU. I uh, just want to make sure both cameras can see this because that's going to be better. You can mount it sideways, skip the first slot, the next two down, line it up, and it's open end, so as I said, this card will just slot right in, even though it's 
an X16 card in an X8 slot, we won't have any trouble. Next up, grab two thumb screws like this, like this, and just screw this down. Well, assuming you have the motor skills of a higher than five year old, you should be able to screw this down. So, not me. And of course, because this is a GPU, GPU wants is power hungry. You're going to run this eight pin that we ran from the power supply earlier. Over here, and the camera's out of battery. Perfect. I could have used those ones in the lead, I just like using the first one. Alright. Swap batteries. Alright, GPU's in. We've plugged that cable in. We're gonna run, wait a minute for our status. Alright, the next card I want to plug in is going to be my M.2 riser. This is actually kind of unfortunate because it blocks a bunch of the airflow that the GPU would normally get, but... Again, if this case allowed side-mounted GPUs, I would do it just so that uh, we're not covering the GPU fan, because this is... I mean, you can see from this angle particularly, that's pretty bad. It's covering up half a fan. Well, let's grab a thumb screw, screw this one in, yeah a side mounted GPU would at least give it a bit more airflow, but what are we going to do? Could have used this card as well, this card is considerably smaller, but still half height, so not a big change in that regard. Now I want the next card, this is the PCIe Gen 2x4 to be the SAS card. Historically this was the USB because I had wi fire wire on the bottom slot. All right. Grab a screw. All right. That's our HBA so we can now route all of our hard drive cables to it. I'm just going to use the three on this side for sheer convenience. We could, I could use the ones on the motherboard. I just want to do some more extensive testing first, make sure that those ports aren't broken, so I don't end up frying something else. These three should be the ones on this side should be good though. I'm a little bit iffy on the chipset ones, uh, so I'll. I'll have to test those first. To be fair, the other two drives that were plugged into SATA are still alive and working well. It's just that one SSD, but it's left a bad taste in my mouth, you know. Alright, so this is the sound card. For the sound card, we're, we have the rainbow cables. We want to have the rainbow cables up so that... Uh, can this plug in both ways? No, it can't. It plugs in one way, so you want to plug that in. So this is for front panel audio. And then plug it into the PCI slot. There we go. The tolerance is on. Oh, 
on the PCI bracket is considerably larger, if anything. Intriguing. Screw it in. And finally, last but not least, grab our USB 3 card. We're going to have USB 3 from the front panel over here. Plug that in. Not, Don't hot glue it because we're not Dell or Alienware. Move these cables out of the way to make sure we don't interfere with those. And this one's going to go like this. Man, this paint reminds me of like some audio amplifiers and whatnot where it's just like you open it up and it's a uh, similar to this type of architecture where it's just slots and you just slot in all of these uh all these individual cards essentially all right now we want to screw this in all right the hba has a number of headers there this hba really 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 heats up to be fair i've heard that's a general complaint about these lsi cards but something to keep in mind you can burn your finger off that heat sink probably And again, not necessarily surprising, it has its own CPU and all, but, yeah, all right, so audio I'm actually going to run from the bottom hole, just to cable manage this thing a bit, so this should be audio, yep, run it through here, and the back panel, well, no one's going to see it, so, out of sight, out of mind. So this is this, all right, now we have this from the sound card, we're just going to plug her in, perfect, and all right, so not the best cable management, not going to lie, but that's also I don't know, I deem it acceptable. Right, and how could we forget this? This is um, a piece of cardboard from an old box that uh, just props up my GPU just because it's an X8 slot and otherwise it does tend to sag. This is my hard drive cooler fan. And it's just going to go over here like this, blow air over the hard drives when I actually clean up those wires a bit. Historically it's just kind of been there like that. It'll probably find its place there again eventually. All right, and with that said, this is now more or less looking like a complete system. So with the added cost of losing one SD card throughout this recording process, I think we are pretty much done. Time to plug it in check the BIOS, make sure that there's nothing, our hardware is showing up. Alright, so this computer's normal spot is just back here. Basically going to come this clump of wires that run to it. Alright, this is going to be a speaker wire. It's over here. Now we've got the computer. I'm going to plug in at least one monitor. Nice and keyboard. I usually just use one of these. So here we go. Mouse and keyboard. I like to do it this way. I forgot to turn the work light off. Any other USB accessories? Hard drive cables, so on. We don't need that at the moment. Old speaker system, nope. We're saying we're not using it. Power, so this is the last big component. All right. 
and uh, well, that's the capture card. We can. I'll get to all that stuff later. So of course, the reason I care about plugging the mouse and keyboard here, and I can't do it on this uh, USB three, is because USB three doesn't work on the BIOS, because the computer needs to boot first for that to be detected. But we can now give this the first power on. Uh-oh, it doesn't turn on. Oh no. Remember to flip this. Oh, oh lots of dust flying out. Alright. You can see my uh, nice light that I've uh, gathered for this purpose. But definitely not questionable. Splitters. But now we can make our way to this screen. It'll take a while, but it'll do the beep 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 when it posts. Also, digital zoom, very unfortunate. All right, let's see. Uh, see if I. Here we hear the beep 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 beep. I heard the buzzer to a pip there. Make sure our CPU is not like overly hot. Nope, everything's good. Pip it up. Oh, there we go. And we should be able to get it to the BIOS now. LSI Corporation, that'll be for the red card. All right, so let's look at the sanity test. We're on the all 32 gigs of our RAM is correctly detected. Let's look at the CPU config, socket 1, 2650 V2, correctly detected, 20 megs of L3 cache, 2600 megahertz, perfect. Let's look at socket 2, 2650 V2, 2600 megahertz, that also looks A-OK -okay to me. Alright, perfect. That's looking good. Set a config, yeah, all of these are not present because I currently just unplugged them all. So I didn't want to use the SATA. Otherwise, the other four ports would be on SCU. I can probably trust the SCU. We'll see. But, yeah, we won't have the hard disk at the moment. Um, so I don't think it's going to be able to boot to anything. But Alright. So the system works. Now, I don't, uh, man, it's, you can, the more I hold this camera, the more I can see just how much sharper and like less bloomy the, uh, the GF3 looks. And mind you, the GF3 is quite an old camera. It's an old beast. I wanted to, as I said, I uh, it's like camera aside, I was going to swap cameras around. And I want to buy like a new Sony or something. Because, um, you know, we had old Sony lenses. But the problem is, 30 minute record limit. You know how long this video is? Hours. <laughs> Not 30 minutes. Same thing with Canon, same thing with Nikon. But Lumix, Panasonic, seems to be the only one. And I guess some new Sony cameras. But these have no record limit. I can go as long as I want. Of course, I can't do more than 10 seconds at full HD, usually, because the SD card isn't uh, fast enough, apparently, even though it's a class 10 SD card, higher class than this thing can accept. But this thing definitely is uh, definitely a bit broken, because um, 1080p 30 is supposed to be 17 megabits a second. And, um, well... This definitely exceeds that, so let's uh, set it to full HD, and then we'll see the 
Nice disaster that ensues. We'll see if it can hit the battery at once. Anyway, there we go. We don't have a... Oh, here we go. Motion request cancelled due to the recording limitation... due to the writing limp speed of the card. And the only way to fix it is to unplug it. Alright, we're at the FI shell. That means it's ready for me to load an OS. So time to grab an bootable Arch Linux uh, ISO. And we will give this a whirl. That'll be tomorrow though because I have been recording for 5 hours, 22 minutes and 47 seconds. And it is currently 4.30 a.m. <laughs> Not p.m. a.m. supposed to go to bed at 4.5 hours ago. So at this point, all I can say is, thank you all so much for watching. I seriously hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching this video on how to build, on how to choose parts for and build a value-oriented NAS server or workstation computer. Um, as I said, this computer isn't the highest performance. It's not the cheapest, but I tried to aim for a very good balance between the two. Um, and I mean, as I said, uh, personal experiences has been going fantastic for the past year and a half and I'm very happy with the result and how it turned out so um, I hope you enjoyed this video I hope I was able to give you a lot of insight I mean the reason this video is oh no five hours and 23 minutes now is because I mean I don't want to cut away the technical details necessarily if I think there's something worth talking about a given component I like nerding out about it I like being just a you know I like being a geek about it and I like uh, teaching and uh, explaining, I guess, advantages and like, I guess how, how this stuff works because, I mean, I don't want to say I live and breathe tech, but like, I, 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 I am, I'm genuinely interested in and passionate about this stuff. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. In the past emails, I used to say, also feel free to email me. I've been getting a lot, number of emails from viewers and uh, I feel very bad because I don't have the time to re reply usually because I'm... Uh, if I'm in a school semester, I'm usually too busy with classes. And then at some point I have to stop checking my email because otherwise, you know, it just gets stuck in my mind. Oh, you know, I should come up with a re reply for this person. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully, uh, I mean, I guess you can leave a comment down below which part you enjoyed more. The first uh, more explanation based part or the more practical how to actually build a computer part. Um, I'm generally always interested in both. So, you know, I, I made both. Um, but, uh, yeah, of course, I mean, as I said, it'll probably depend on what you're more interested in. Um, I don't know if I'll upload this as one part or two parts. I guess that's to be seen, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I have no idea if anyone made it to the end, but if you did, thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you all for the kind words people have been leaving in my past videos. Um, I really appreciate it. Have a great day and, uh, keep learning. Thanks. Bye.